Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll do another analysis. This time we will analyze modum, modum token uh, a bit more in detail. So modum, if we jump into coin market cap is currently at 227 with um, a market capitalization of 20 million, 20.3 million US dollars. And the token itself is at 95 cents. Now, if we First, uh, we always start with the website and uh, in today's analysis video, I actually want to go mainly into the token dynamics as well as look at the team, because as you know, the um, analysis videos always take super long. So we always focus on certain aspects when we do more fundamental analysis, research videos and, and uh, documents, we look into different aspects such as the product the technology and all of these things. But in this video, we will focus solely on the token dynamics as well as the team. So we are modem providing data integrity and authenticity for global supply chain operations. So what exactly does that mean? has here uh, our solutions and applications in pharma. And this will be relevant, as you will know in a couple of seconds. Industry focused and cutting edge modem streamlines value chain processes by providing trusted and scalable monitoring solutions for goods in transit through modem services. Your supply chain data will become your most valuable intelligence, automating business processes and bridging external silos developed with purpose. So we have here actually looks like a hardware piece. Our products are designed for specific applications in various industries. And this is probably the piece uh, of hardware that will be used here. Again, industry specific. Here's a hardware device has different button uh, buttons as well as a QR code has their expiry date and so on and so forth. So what exactly are they doing? Maybe let's check out the applications in pharma. And we can see here ensuring regulatory compliance. So the thing is, there is a in the EU, there is a law called the good distribution practice. And uh, for medicinal products, there is this law that certain products have uh, to have a certain aspect, a certain temperature. And modem is exactly providing this. They are providing the hardware piece that uh, looks at the temperature and checks for um, the current temperature in the package for pharmaceutical packages. Meaning that if I am a big pharmaceutical uh, producer and I'm uh, developing and sending off packages in the pharmaceutical business, what I will do is I put a modem tracker into this package and it will track constantly the temperature, making sure that it has not been tampered with and that it is um, kind of um, accurate and and the right temperature all the time. So it says, it says here even the ModSense trademark is qualified to meet pharma industry requirements and regulations. Working with secured and easy to manage data will also help you to raise the bar for your own internal quality standards. Now, that's really interesting because Modem is a Swiss company. Modem is based in Zurich in Switzerland, where we are, and they are working mainly with pharmaceutical companies. Now, pharmaceutical companies are also in Zurich, but also in Basel, where uh, pharmaceutical companies such as Roche and Novartis are working out of. And this will be and is a huge industry. And the whole tracking part obviously is also quite important. So you have the modem um, a tracker that tracks the current um, temperature and all of these uh, other things, I think light and all, all other things as well. We'll take a look at the uh, white paper in a second. And then afterwards, um, it, it will be kind of uh, displayed on the blockchain. So you can always know where which package had what temperature, etc. But let's jump right into this kind of uh, white paper, which I kind of liked. I mean, it's it's uh, again a bit businessy, if you will, with the images and the kind of uh, the the the, um, the view and and all of these things. So it's it's it explains it to a, let's say a more non technical aspect. So you have a database, you have the server, and that is at the same time. Uh, connecting to an Ethereum node, you have an REST API and the whole front end. So the, there is the, the temperature logger, the mobile application where you can actually track it. You will see it on the dashboard and probably the mobile app as well. And all of these things will be connected to the Ethereum network. Now, why is this um, important? Before we jump into this, um, if we see here, 
what exactly is the modem modem token so the modem token listed as mod is an erc20 compatible token which means its smart contract runs on the ethereum blockchain you can interact with it transfer store use the smart contract and so on and so forth what exactly is it used for comes with profit share and voting rights this is new and this is quite interesting for more information on the profit share and voting processes scroll down so we'll look at this in a couple of seconds now this is also important because in switzerland we have this regulatory um, classification that have uh, in in for icos as well as cryptocurrencies there are three classes of cryptocurrencies currently you have a payment token you have a utility token and an asset token and actually the modem token is currently considered an asset token now normally that would mean that technically um, you can uh, participate in certain voting rights on modem so that would be quite interesting um, however and here is exactly how it works so how does the profit sharing process work and again guys these informations they are probably already in the white paper as well but it's important that you check those things on the website as well so the board of directors decide if and how much of a dividend is to be paid if a dividend is determined a payment equivalent to the defined dividend will be forwarded to all modem token holders meaning so if you're a holder and the board of directors decides that this was a good year or the goals have been reached then and only then will you be paid a dividend um, that will happen if you have the modem tokens on a wallet that you control if you have it on an exchange you will have to move it to a wallet otherwise it won't work the amount in swiss francs will be converted to ethereum and sent to the modem smart contract the smart contract will evaluate the current holdings and distribute the profits to modem token holders in ethereum the tokens that are locked for the shareholders of modem do not come with profit participation rights while they are locked how do you get your share it says here actually that you um, that four weeks in advance a, a snapshot will be announced and afterwards um, the token holders will be informed and you will have to um, keep your tokens in a wallet where you control the private key and why is is quite relevant right now um, it it you will uh, token holders will need to withdraw the tokens from any exchange and store them on a private wallet before the snapshot is performed and only then you will you have the rights the smart contract will identify the number of tokens in your wallet and distribute the profit share accordingly now this is an important sentence with your private key you will prove ownership of your modem tokens that's a tricky one now um, we have experienced all these scams that are going around be it on twitter and all of these different pages the problem is the private key entering that to a page that let's say even if modem has announced it and kind of make this legit etc entering the private key is always a very very risky move and i would have wished that modem would uh, come up with a kind of um, more secure variation here so that would be quite interesting um, to to see whether in the future we'll see a more secure way of um, be it uh, sh showing the ownership of modem tokens also the question is will you have to show ownership all the time will you have to show it four weeks before after the snapshot all of these things now if we jump to the white paper what we can see here again like the structure and we have here the, the the chip that is being packaged so the package is then being run and transported and kind of um, at all times being tracked and the smart contract will be verified once the um, people receive or the company receives the package let's say this is a pharmaceutical company sends it off it gets trans transported will be tracked all of these tracking will be kind of uh, distributed and shown on the mobile phone and then afterwards you will receive it um, as let's say a pharmacy or something similar here are a bit more technical details so one the operating temperature range is minus 10 degrees celsius up to 70 degrees celsius arbitrary temperature ranges alerts and all of these things so you you have uh, 50 000 measurement points it is ip65 so i'm assuming it is waterproof i'm not entirely sure has six weeks of battery life and one year of passive on shelf and um, battery life here 
Now, what is interesting here is this here. So you have the token economics breakdown. So you have a token sale. So did ICO and then you have the 30% that goes to modem. So why is this so high? That's the big question. So normally what you see is everything between 10 to 20%. So the big question is why is a modem? And I'm guessing this is the team um, receiving so much. They will use it for different um, different uh, uh, projects. And the thing is, and this is also interesting, they will uh, these tokens will be locked in the beginning and only if there is a positive vote in that case, the modem, um, P modem owners on one side, so the, the, the founders, etc., as well as the modem token holders will receive the tokens. Now, if we look here at the voting and the milestones, it works as follows. So currently there have been four uh, milestones defined. So this is the first milestone. It was um, voting period was between November 3rd and November 17th. Participation was 11.8% and 98.5% were positive. So um, said here, 900,000 more tokens to be used as compensation for our advisors, volunteers and bounty participant. Milestone two, go to market of our first product line was completed in July 10th. To 24 so just uh, one and a half two months ago and participation was only 3.8 percent and 98 point uh, 93.8 percent was positive so what is worrying in my opinion here is the drop in participation now voting generally is anyway super low out as well when you're going to vote for the state it's always super low but at the same time this drop is fairly significant could be also related to the general hype dying down and people not being that interested, to be honest. But in any case, it was positive. So these 3% were able to, to get a positive outcome. And the next milestone will be here, deliver the next sensor generation with real time interaction. The objective of milestone three is to deliver the second sensor generation with real time interaction via current or emerging network technologies uh, like LoRaWAN, which is um, this technology where I think it's a low energy uh, transmittent transmittance uh, technology and using these technologies, you can um, transfer data and information. There is a fourth milestone as well, additional environmental sensors. I am guessing that they are using these for then different um, industries. So right now it's very pharmaceutical focused and all of these things. So that will be probably other sensors for other things. Now, if we go here, what was quite interesting is you were able to see, I think, um, what type of things the tracker itself were able to track. So we have temperature. I'm guessing this is speed. I'm not really sure. This is probably sunlight and this is, um, I'm guessing, humidity or uh, water or wetness in general. So this are the, the kind of additional tracking sensors. So currently, I think it only does the um, the, the, the temperature, uh, so which is the, 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 the part of this uh, GDP um, given by the EU. So it's quite important for pharmaceutical companies as well as pharmacies, etc. Now, next up, we look at the team. The team, as always, super important. We have here Simon Dösecke, Dr. Stefan M. Weber, and Sascha Ullmann as CEO, COO, and CTO. Other than this, um, some engineers, some project managers, UX, head of quality, and uh, an additional way of engineers. Now, here, interestingly, board of directors, we have Werner Spöri, Thomas Bojek, Mark Degen, Pascal Degen. I'm guessing these are brothers and Michel Scher. And we will look at these in detail. So let's start with Simon Dösek. He is the CEO at Modem.io. And by the way, before we get started, what is interesting is these are all founders, but none of them is actively working on the company. So I'm not sure whether these are at the same time, the C-level executives, whether they are founders or not, could be interesting because uh, it essentially says that these guys founded the company, but then moved back kind of focused on something else and um, had the idea, but gave the kind of keys to the to the business, to the executives, which are maybe more experienced. But let's see. Simon Dezecker, he's the CEO from Zurich. He studied at, uh, I think, ETH, mechanical engineering and uh, has worked as an 
wow, fighter plane captain. So worked at the Swiss Army as a project manager. He was the CEO of Skybotics for two years and seven months. Skybotic provide high precision navigation 3D mapping solutions for uh, UAVs and mobile robotics in research and visual inspection markets. Now, this is probably not the exact same business, but at the same time, it is a business with hardware components. So that's always a good thing because hardware businesses have a different kind of um, problem, if you will, when you compare it um, to pure software business. He was also a senior product manager for two years and three months in Zurich at GoPro and then became the CEO for Modo. Then we have COO Stefan M. Weber. He worked as CEO at Swiss Lito. The question is, what was were they doing? Operations, manufacturing, supply chain management, and purchasing process IT marketing for nano lithography tools based on IBM technology. Then worked as a product manager, postdoc, and he actually studied here project leader of a team from two universities and industrial partners for the development of MEMS devices. So he definitely has a technical background here as well. As you can see, he studied physics, so engineering background, and is the COO at Modem. CTO, Sasha Ullmann, studied at the University of Zurich. Very little known about him. He only studied here uh, uh, computer science. And then he was the co-founder for Complex Solution Engineering GmbH. I am assuming this is kind of an agency type of business. Oh, it was Complex Solution, apologies. And then he became CTO here. Would have loved to see a bit more about his experience. That would have been quite relevant in my opinion. Then next up, we have the board of directors. We have Werner Sperry and Werner Sperry is actually partner at SNK Partners. Your performance is our challenge. SNK Partners has been founded in 2004 and they are doing financial services. So they are doing, uh, they're they are being, um, being consultants in different financial questions um, as well as a t kind of tax uh, uh, consulting, uh, real estate offers and different insurance as well as investment advice. So he's on the board of directors. Interestingly, like why would he do that? Maybe he knows a bit more on the financial side. So that's definitely interesting. Then we have Thomas Bocek. He is or Bocek, um, he is a professor at Hochschule für Technik in Rapperswil. So he did work um, or is currently still working as a professor. He's an advisor, CTO, mentor, and he's a doctor in computer science from the University of Zurich. Quite interesting background. Um, but the question is, why is he not the CTO? Was he inexperienced to be C-level or, or doesn't he want to deal with the daily business? Could be many reasons. Then we have Mark Degen here. He and Pascal Degen, I'm assuming these are brothers. Um, he has a more businessy background. So IT and communication, MBA in business engineering and also executive education in strategy. So he's been founder, 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 co-founder, co-founder and member of the board. Again, the question is, why is he not actively here? Um, like uh, actually uh, uh, um, making sure that the company goes into the right direction. And here I would say the most um, interesting person in terms of connection to the industry, Pascal Degen, he is the head of sterile assembly and packaging, as well as head of pro was head of process and logistics service at Novartis in Stein in Argau. So he has also been working in uh, head supply chain development and has worked here in supply management as well. So definitely strong uh, logistics, supply management, and kind of packaging background here he is also uh, one of the founders so definitely very interesting but he as well is just a co-founder and i'm saying here just um the question is why is he not actively doing uh, working on the business but i think in terms of partnerships this could be pretty much the strongest partnership there is he works in on novartis and modem is working directly in the kind of pharmaceutical branch and area so this is a very clear kind of runway so i could imagine novartis getting um, their feet wet with blockchain technology by buying a company like modem and this actually brings us to a different 
interesting uh, part and that is what happens in the case of acquisition. So the contractual obligation between Modum IO AG and the token holders remains intact in the case of an acquisition. The acquiring company is bound to this agreement and the token preserves voting rights and profit sharing rights. So normally, let's say Pascal Degen makes it happen, Novartis will buy Modum IO, nobody knows, but could be very possible that you will um, keep your voting rights as well as your dividend rights as well. But in the meantime, it is uh, from an investor perspective, you should hope that Modum will make a lot of profits, will get their feet wet in the kind of uh, supply chain management area so that a lot of people are using the Modum product. And that way you can make sure that um, Modum at uh, this stage will kind of um, um, give a lot of dividends out. The problem is just this if. So the board of directors could at any stage could decide that no, we don't want to pay any dividends and reinvest the profits into the company. They could do this for five years. You couldn't see any kind of dividends. You will have voting rights, yes, but in the end, you wouldn't get any kind of um, financial return from it. Then it gets acquired and the contract is gone. Very possible. So this is kind of the, the business we are dealing with in crypto. You have to be aware of these things, even though with modem you have a bit more rights that are actually written down. At the same time, you have to know where your rights end and until where you can kind of um, uh, justify and execute those rights as well. Then at the end, we have Michel Cher. He is the CEO and owner of Share Farm. And that's also a very interesting um, company. It's a, it's a small to medium business sized um, uh, co company and they are doing mainly pharmaceuticals. So field sales here as well. Um, we can check out the company a bit, but in the end, it's a pharmaceutical company. They are close to Modem's core business. And in the end, um, if we look here at the team exactly, he's also the founder and member of the board. So definitely there is a strong pharmaceutical co connection. Now, to kind of wrap this topic up, should you invest into Modum, yes or no? I believe Modum has a very interesting kind of um, business case with pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals here in Switzerland, between Basel and Zurich, quite a strong market. And um, the fact that the founders are so directly involved um, if you will, or indirectly involved in pharmaceuticals makes it a very, very appealing case. Now, that being said, it could be that they are kind of focusing on different markets already. And this I am hoping not to see. So I hope they will stay with pharmaceuticals, really, really rule in the pharmaceutical markets, make a lot of profit and kind of show that they are also going to pay dividends. I think this is also a big if. Will they pay dividends? Yes or no? Should, like if you know and are sure that they will pay dividends, yes, this is basically an asset you can invest in. It is a fairly cheap asset, meaning you could buy quite a lot and with that get a lot of dividend as well. But that is always kind of a risky move. It could very well be that they won't pay out any dividends because technically, even as an asset holder, you, your rights go only so far. And um, that's, I think, quite important. But other than this, I think it's an interesting company. Take a look at it, read the white paper and check out also the pharmaceutical industry as a whole to understand how big this market is. But with that, guys, we are at the end of this short analysis video. If you want to know more, sign up at bluealpineresearch.com and get the free training video where I go a bit more into detail how we do research here at Blue Alpine Research. And yeah, with that, uh, I wish you a great Sunday. Uh, enjoy the day uh, or maybe Monday if I upload this on the next day. But in any case, um, I wish you a great day. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.